Okay, real quick. Um, what we've done is when we are when we open up the animal and we take the entrails out, we keep the heart, the liver, the spleen, we keep the tongue, we keep the call fat, and we bring it in and we prep it real quick for use. Uh, and it can be used many, many different ways. So I'm going to show you right here what I have on the table. Okay, liver. This is call fat. If you've not seen that, it, it's pretty neat looking stuff. This surrounds the stomach and it's, it's pure fat. If you render it down, there's really nothing left. A little bit of sinew, but not much. And a lot of times that's used to wrap a meatloaf or something like that. Um, these are the kidneys. All right, and then we split those in two and there's a membrane that you cut out of the inside and then the kidney is really good. Um, liver breaks down into four lobes and then there's a, a bile duct on there that has to be taken off kind of carefully. Um, and then this is the brain and it has a membrane on it that has to be um, taken off. But it's not hard. I mean, once you start doing it, you'll see what I mean. And then the tongue. And it seems a little gross, but you know what's grosser is wasting it, right? So the tongue is actually very good. And um, a prime example of daring to fail was yesterday. Uh, I have a friend helping me with this that I haven't seen in 30 years, one of my Air Force chums. And he's never butchered a pig. And yesterday we were doing this together and when we got to the place where I wanted him to open up the pig and I'm pushing him a little bit, um, he, he was apprehensive and I said, oh, don't worry about it. It's okay. And he said, well, I heard that if you perforate the guts on this, you can ruin the animal. And I said, yeah, I heard that too. You hear a lot of things, but <clears throat> think about it, <laughs> you know you accidentally perforate the guts and it spills on the meat, what do you do? That's what hoses are for. You hose it off. If you really feel bad about it, then you can hose it off with hot water or something. And as he was doing it, he hit it and it sprayed all on him, right? And that's kind of a classic thing when you're butchering pigs. That's happened to several of my friends that have gotten sprayed with guts. Well, the manure, actually. And, uh, and then we... You know, we dropped the guts out and actually never actually got on the meat and then we were able to hose it out and it was, it was done effectively. You know, I'm not saying that you should just intentionally do that. I would say avoid it. I avoid it. But if it happens, it happens. Lots of things happen when you're doing this. Now today we're going to be bringing these carcasses in. I left them hang outside overnight and that is part of this process as we use the seasons to our advantage. So it's, it was 30 out last night or maybe even a little less. So I left it out. I wouldn't leave it out if it was like below zero because then the carcass would be too hard for me to cut. And then, uh, where is this place, Mary Kelly? We're in Northern Michigan, Marion, Michigan. Our website is bakersgreenacres.com if you want to look at it. <clears throat> and we do classes to teach people how to do this. So. Um, if you're interested, it's called the Anyone Can Farm Homesteaders Guild. So we're a bunch of homesteaders that come together and we share what we do, you know, and there's no that's wrong or that's wrong. There is sometimes, well, I wouldn't do that. You know, I do do that because if I've, if I've uh, made a mistake, I would say, well, when I did this, this is what happened. But I, I like to stay away from the absolutes of that ain't right or that's not true. You know, and sometimes on the Internet you get that where people have read an account and then they just call it up from their memory banks and they say it does not compute. Well, it might not compute for you because you've never done it. But for me, it absolutely computes because I do this all the time, you know. So that's what I mean about that, that negativeness and the daring to fail, you know. People throw the negative out there like they know 
and it's an absolute no-no to do something, and then people are afraid to do the process. And that's bad. I think you need to dare to fail at this process and aim really high on this. So you can do this. You can do this. Okay, so um, that happened, it, and it sprayed on them. Well, we got the hose out, and we sprayed it out, and then we dropped the guts right down into a pan, and it was totally clean. And now this is a guy that's never done this before, and so when he went to sleep last night, he could check that off his list. Well, I gutted a pig today, right? So, okay, I'll be coming back to you because we're going to bring those carcasses in and we're going to break them into what's called primals. And I'm not going to actually show me doing it because it takes too much time. I'll just, after it's all broken into primals, I'll get a shot down on it so you can see uh, how I do it. I mean, there's, there's a million ways to do this and no way is, is right or no way is wrong. It's what works for you. And I think for the new homesteader... Um, I would say don't try to bite off too big of a, uh, of a chunk here. If you can get the animal, you know, killed, scalded and scraped, which is what we do, or scun and hung up, well, it's very easy to go out there once a day and cut some chunks off of it. And you may not know what those chunks are, but you can bring them in the house and you can fry them up and eat them. You know, so you will be bringing it from the field to the kitchen, right? Uh, we're going to show what we've learned, taking it a little further than that and breaking it down into some cuts that people are used to seeing, like pork chops and copa steaks and things like that. And then there's stuff that we really like that the uh, pork industry doesn't do. So um, a lot of industrial agriculture is done for industrial agriculture's benefit. I mean, it's expedient to them and they can make more money doing that. Um, like, you may like a pork chop that's one inch, but they always cut them at five eighths. Why? Because they can get like one more at the end of the loin to do that. And that's just an example. I'm not sure that's true. Um, but it's like, for instance, uh, if you wanted to get pork lungs from your butcher, they would say, nope, can't do that. We can't sell that because the pigs that come out of concentrated animal feeding operations, the air in there is so putrid that the lungs become contaminated and they're not fit for human consumption and they probably aren't. They pr would probably taste like manure. But like here's a set of lungs from the pig that we did yesterday and they're perfect and they're nice and pink and beautiful and healthy and it's a good source of protein. We would not want to waste that and that actually goes into... Uh, a soup that is outstanding. What's neat about this process for the homesteader is you may love the pig that you're getting ready to butcher. You may love it. So do the pig a favor and use the entire carcass. Don't waste any of it if you can help it. <clears throat> Even the parts that are in the bucket out there, like the, the stuff that I didn't use, they are not going to go to waste because we're a regular farm, we have guardian dogs, and if I don't have to feed my dogs, I don't have to buy it from the store. That's, that's another aspect of this that's great, is uh, I don't have to feed my support animals. You know, My support animals are my guardian dogs because I raise a lot of pasture poultry in the summertime, and uh, if you don't have guardian dogs, you're gonna have predation big time and uh, they're big dogs i use great pyrenees and uh they're expensive to feed if you feed them from the store and the stuff that comes from the store is not fit for them to eat i mean they will eat it and they will maintain on it but they will have tooth decay they will have they will fart a lot they will drool a lot and um, so we use it sparingly if we are not doing any butchering in the shop then we will buy dog food. But in this case, like the stomach and the, um, the intestines that I'm not using, they're gonna utilize it. And it's legitimate feed too, it's not gonna hurt them. It's actually good for them. So, uh, okay, we'll get on with it, thanks.